In this video, we're going to look at the 3D models for the NanoLeaf replica light, specifically the connector piece that's on show here. What I've actually done is modify this so that we can actually put the PCB that we designed in our previous video so that it'll fit in here and there'll be a button on the front with some indicator lights to say uh, that the unit is trying to switch on and also so that you can actually turn the unit on and off without having to go to the web interface in order to do that. So if we have a look at the original unit here, you can see it's actually in two pieces. So we've got the upper and lower piece. Now all this piece literally does is it connects between other triangles uh, and just gives you a place you can tidily route the cable. So you can come in here, go around, come out that side, all the usual bits and pieces. Now we've got this gap in the middle. So the idea is, is that that will actually get filled up. So we'll then have a button in the middle. And as I said in the previous video, it will have a bit of a, so I'm, I don't want to call it a light pipe because I know it's not going to work like a light pipe, but there'll be a ring on the inside that'll be illuminated by the LEDs to say that the unit is trying to switch on or not. So that's the original one. And as I said, it's literally just two pieces there. So it's literally just creating effectively a triangular tube, for want of a better term, uh, around to root cables so you don't see them just dangling across. So let's bring up the redesign. Um, so the bottom piece is exactly the same. There is no difference between these whatsoever. The top piece obviously is different. Now for the most part, it's actually it's not that different to be honest. Um, I say it's different because visually it does look different, but the actual main structure on the inside is very, very similar. So again, if we hide the bottom pieces, cause like I say, they're identical. So you can see when you look at it like this, it is, fundamentally the same. All I've really done is just fill in this bit at the top here uh, and give a hole for the button. So you can see the representation of the PCB. This is uh, designed to be quite a snug fit. There's only a very small amount of tolerance between them. Um, I could have probably gone for a bit more tolerance, but uh, I wanted to keep it nice and tight if I can. It's high, that one. So the way that I've got this at the moment, you can see in the corners, there are the standoffs which are built into the design. I've designed these to actually take the little brass inserts. So the idea for this is that it makes it, I find they're just a little bit more robust and I enjoy using them. I mean, if I'm honest, I'm using them because I can more than anything else. So yeah, the little brass inserts, I, I like using those. They give a more positive feel. I have got some self-tapping plastic screws I could use but I just wanted to use these. I don't use the brass inserts very much and I thought it'd just give a nicer finish to the whole thing, even though it's on the inside and you're never gonna see them again. Um, we've got here, these little cylinders here actually are the wrong color, um, but uh, they're gonna be the LEDs, which I'm not gonna get it to work anyway. So they're gonna be LEDs so we can hide those. So here we've got the button itself. And if I just move that out of the way, you can see it's actually two pieces. So you've got the uh, outer black plastic and then the inner not light pipe. Um, so that will take the LED light and hopefully spread it somewhat around the outside. Now I'm under no illusions. I'm expecting it to be basically a hotspot here, a hotspot here, a hotspot here, and a hotspot here. I don't expect it to be evenly spread out around it, especially considering we're only running them on about three milliamps. So in fact, slightly less than that because of the resistance change. So yeah, I'm not expecting this to be a, a ring of light, more just sort of like a, a circle with some bright patches on it. Um, I could potentially look at changing that in the future with the LEDs and giving them a bit more power by running them through a transistor. Uh, but for now, we'll keep it the way it is because that's the circuit that I've ordered. Um, now, one thing you might notice, it's not that visible from the outside here, but there is a gap in here. Now, the only reason I've put that uh, and this basically fills it in is to make sure that this piece is fully anchored on the inside here. So there are uh, some grooves on the outside here and obviously that gap in the middle there. So that, that way, the hopefully when it prints this, because um, it's going to be printed, this bottom bit will be the underside. So it's going to print from this side here and print up. So it means that these bits here, where this will be, if we move that over the top, uh, 50, isn't it? so um, this will be obviously just free floating. It's just gonna be in the air. So it needs to 
uh, stretch over the top. So I'm hoping with the design that it will anchor into the edges and over the top of this. So that way as it uh, does the bridging, it will just fill in quite happily without it drooping too much. Now I'm not expecting it to be perfect because depending on the angle that it goes at, um, there are gonna be some quite long stretches coming across. So um, now the Prusa printer that I've got, it's pretty well uh, tuned in for that. So it doesn't do a bad job, but I'm still expecting it to drop down a little bit. So uh, I wanna try and give it as much of a uh, chance as I can without having to put support material in. Mainly, I don't like support material predominantly because it's just wasteful. It's just literally there to support and then you bin it and I don't like that way. So if I can get away with it, I will try first. Now that's a bit of a ding there because if I does if this doesn't work, I have to print a whole new one out, which obviously is a bit of a problem. Uh, I do have the MMU for the Prusa, so I can print both of these at the same time. And I'm planning on doing it with uh, uh, PETG. Um, no real reason, it's just the main one that I got and I like working with it and it's quite a nice, it's reasonably temperature resistant and also as easy to print most of the time as PLA. So that's the one I generally work with. And actually the only clear that I have is uh, PETG. And something I've discovered is PETG does not like uh, combining with PLA. So yeah. Um, doing this with uh, those two materials would be a nightmare. So um, yeah, this will be that way only. So um, that's pretty much the model. There's there's not an awful lot to say about it. Um, so it's designed to hold the PCB, hopefully very securely. Uh, and then you've got the button on the front so that way um, we can turn the unit on and off uh, without it needing to be accessed through the web uh, interface. So here we've got Prusa Slicer all ready to go. Uh, so if we add in our, let's do the front case to begin with. Um, now, one thing I love about the newer versions of Prusa Slicer, so I'm running on 2.3, um, is this is obviously orientated very much the wrong way. So really easy on this one. So just go uh, place on face, click on the face and it'll rotate it around for you. So on this one, I think the default settings are pretty good on this, if I remember correctly. So yeah, we've got the uh, two walls going around for the outer ones. And then on the inside here, you've got, uh, this was designed specifically for the 0.2 millimeter uh, layer height. So here it's actually been designed. So it is precisely two uh, or four, sorry, uh, perimeters on that. Um, if you're ever designing something like this and you want to minimize the infill or have it so that there's sometimes that little gap that it tries to fill up, what you can do is if you go to print settings um, and then you can have a look here. Uh, where are we? Uh, there it is, sorry. I'm looking below. So you've got here recommended thin wall thickness for a layer height. So for two lines, you're looking at 0.86 mil. Four lines, which is what we've got there, is 1.67 millimeters. So it gives you an idea of the sort of thickness that you want to do. And as you increase perimeters, this will also give you more uh, options. So you can go as well, it goes up to 10 lines there. So, um, so yeah, it's really useful if you don't want to have little bits of infill or you don't want to have it trying to do this sort of infill or fill infill. So yeah, really useful on that front. So that's that one. And I say there's not an awful lot to do on that one. It's all largely uh, done and there's nothing special about this particular part of it. So if we go back, let us remove that one. Now, the next thing I'm going to bring in the button so I need to switch the model. So let's go to the MMU. So it sees the two, it will see those two parts. So I've got the button body and button lens. So if we open that up, it asks, do we want to combine them? Yes, we do. And there we go. So we've got it in there. Um, so currently I've got, uh, let's just change the colors here. So that's going to be currently where the black is in that one. Uh, and clear is currently this one, which we'll do is a very light gray. Uh, change these over. So that one's going to be our light gray and that one's going to be our black, which we've got dark gray. I always do it dark gray because black just makes it a bit harder to see because of the way the rendering works. So um, we can see the two parts there and this is the orientation it's going to be printed in. So we're going to have bridging going along there. So if we have a look at our 
effect on that. So yeah, as I said, you can see there's going to be some long stretches of bridging there, which hopefully means it won't droop too much. Um, but we'll wait and see when that does actually print. Um, that's not infill there, that is actually just the top layer. Um, or it might actually be infill. All right. Um, I might have a look at that and modify this slightly so we can get rid of that last bit of infill. Um, now, one thing I want to have a look at on here, again, this isn't really a, a tutorial on all of this, but if we go to uh, add in a modifier and go to the infill, <laughs> top fill pattern, there we go. So at the moment it's in the monotonic, which means it all constantly go, it's just back and forth, but goes in one direction only. So like here, it's gonna to have to do this in two bits. So it'll probably go along there and then start back over here. So you don't get that weird shimmering that you can see on some of them. The other ones that you could do with this, because it's circular, is do concentric. Um, but unfortunately, because of the thickness here, I don't know why it does this, but it does miss this bit out. It could potentially fill that in, it may have to either do two thinner ones or one thicker one, but yeah, it's a shame it does do that. And again, same in the middle, but the middle one I kind of understand because it's just kind of just doing a splodge, which is a bit harder for it to do neatly. Um, so we could leave it at that. The other thing as well, because this is gonna be on the top side, one thing that we could look at doing is, if we get rid of that and put it back to monotonic, is we've got the new options for ironing. So I'm just going to enable ironing and leave the default setting. So if we enable that, it will then help to try and smooth this off. Now there are compromises with that. It's going to do this one here. You could modify it so it only does this top one. Um, it doesn't do uh, an infill perimeter around it. So you get this kind of jagged edge into it. So that's one thing that we do need to be a bit aware of, but it might be fun to try that just so you get a nice smooth top to it all, um, rather than the more traditional rounded, uh, or a straight lined approach to it. So the self standard infill. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So that will be uh, the overall design of it all. Um, so yeah, we'll see how this goes. Um, I've got the PCBs. Uh, if they haven't already turned up, they should be turning up soon. And hopefully that means next week we'll be able to start populating those and get the units all done. Uh, we'll get these printed out so that, that way everything's ready to go. Once we get it done, we can get it installed and see how it will look. Uh, other than that, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.